טוב, ערב טוב לכולם. ברוכים הבאים למיאמי, מה זה פה, מיאמי או מיאמי ביץ' פה? נורט מיאמי. נורט מיאמי. השתגעתי כבר, ממקום למקום, כבר אני מבולבל מהשמות. אבל ברוך השם, אני... אנחנו, אין לי הרבה זמן לדבר, בגלל שהכל בעיכוב, בערך חצי שעה, ארבעים דקות נדבר, ואז אני צריך ללכת לא להרצאה. אבל אני שמח שנשארתם ובאתי, זכיתי גם לבוא לפה על הדרך. אנחנו נדבר על כמה דברים מאוד מעניינים, בפרט עכשיו שאנחנו מתקרבים לראש השנה, בערך חודש וחצי לפני ראש השנה. אני כבר חמש עשרה שנה מדבר ב- כמעט כל לילה, פעם או פעמיים כל לילה, בדרך כלל בניו יורק, אבל בכל מיני מקומות אחרים באמריקה, וזה מה שנקרא בענייני קירוב, סמינרים והוכחות, והדיסקים האלה שאתם רואים, יש לי ווייבסייט, ברוך השם, שנכנסים שם בערך שישים אלף איש בחודש. מכל העולם, אפילו ערבים. דבר פה רוב אנגלית. אז לדבר אנגלית? כן. תחליטו. אז אמרו לי עברית, שאלתי. לא, לא, לא יודע מי שאלת. הם לא הבינו כשאמרת עברית. Good evening, Miami. Good evening, Miami. Thank you. Not Miami, I should say. Miami was two hours ago. Uh, I will speak a little bit about uh, Rosh Hashanah, it's the judgment day, even though ma- many Jews do not know what Rosh Hashanah means, you go to Israel, you see the beaches are full, Tiberia, the Kinneret, people barbecuing, play backgammon, cards, the kids are running around, they play basketball, so uh, soccer ball, nobody knows that today Hashem decide your entire future. Many, many Jews, unfortunately, don't follow the Torah. Why? Why they don't follow the Torah? This is a big question. How is it possible that 70, I don't know exact number, 70-80% of the Jews in the world don't care, don't care. Some of them read the Torah a little bit here and there. I have, I'm telling you now from 15 years of experience, of, after meeting thousands of people, in Hebrew, in English, in seminars, in weekends, Shabbatonim, who knows how many. There's only one reason for it, and take my word for that, and I promise you it's not an exaggeration. I'm not exaggerating. Only one reason. Ignorance. Borut. They never read the Torah once in their life. Once in their life. Many, many places I go, people argue with me. About the Torah, it says this, it says this. I don't remember once, once, that the argument was valid. Not even once. that the person knew what he's talking about. Let's talk for a second. Let's say I go to a convention of brain surgeons. People who, 30 years, doctors, they know about brains. All their life they deal with brains. I walk in, Israeli chutzpah. Shalom everyone, attention. All of you are baloney. Don't know what you're doing. I have a way to show you what brain surger- surgery is. Begin to give them a speech. I fight with what they do, I argue with them. Then after half an hour that I speak, one of the doctors asks me, excuse me, what are you doing here? You know, who, you're a doctor? Show me. What are you, who are you? <laughs> I don't know, I didn't even go to college. What happened to me? They kick me out of the window for the chutzpah, for the stupidity, you know, that's one thing. But when, we, when, we go, when you go into religion lectures, everybody's like this. Nobody fights against any book. There's one book everybody loves to fight against. What? The Torah. Why? Because it obligates me. If the Torah is real, I am finished. Why? A little bit I heard in school. The Torah says you have to keep Shabbat. Almost every Jew heard about Shabbat. They have to keep it. Nobody can say I never heard the word Shabbat. Everybody heard about it here and there. Even those from the kibbutz or from Russia. They heard. I have to live according to kosher food only. No, I cannot eat whatever I want. I have to give charity. I have to be humble. I have to be generous. I have to be a good husband. I cannot cheat. I have to be a good father. I have to learn Torah. I have to teach my children Torah. There's a lot of I have. I have. When the list begins, leave us alone. Now, of course, most people are not honest to come and say, I'm a loser. Leave me alone. I'm a loser. You're right. I'm a sinner, I'm a Russia, nobody talks like this. So people begin with the excuses. Ah, who say that we really got this Torah, the rabbis made it up, it's primitive, it doesn't belong in this generation, you really believe it? That's what they say. 
But when you begin to see what they have to say, you come to a very interesting conclusion. After you ask them, you find that they never read the Torah once. That's what I never understood. How can you argue against something you don't even have 1% knowledge in? Don't have knowledge. Nothing. But he has a lot of, a lot of arguments to make. The Gemara already spoke about people like this. Istera belagina kish kish karya. It's an Aramic. What does it mean? If you have a tzedakah box, when the tzedakah box is full of coins, you shake it, you don't hear anything. Why? It's packed. It's full. When it has one penny inside, how much noise it makes. Ooh, ah, your ears is falling. Why? One penny makes a lot of noise. The ignorant people usually are the ones who give beautiful lectures against the Torah. Two or three minutes, you challenge them, they, sh they give up. No, no, I'm sorry, okay, forget it. Why? He got himself into trouble. Now, I'm not the type who give up. If a guy starts with me, I go all the way with to the end with him until he admits that he doesn't know anything. Why? If I give up, what the other people will say? Oh, you see, he didn't have what to answer. But this is not what you need to hear. Baruch Hashem, most people here are on the right way. We just need a little chizuk. What's the purpose of life? Who knows? No, we go to learn Torah, we do mitzvot. What's the purpose of life? According to Judaism, somebody asks you, what's the purpose of life? Well, Hashem wants the most... Im There's a lot of things in life that we have to do, we know. Purpose of life, to keep Shabbat. Correct. Purpose of life, to give tzedakah. Correct. Purpose of life to learn Torah. Everything correct. What's above everything? The only reason that Hashem created this world and put us here, they took the soul and put it inside the body. Why it was so important for Hashem to do it? Now you know that the, one of the most famous, there are a few very famous questions that the Chilonim and the Goim are always asking. Even, even religious Jews ask these questions. Some more, some less. What are the most famous questions that people ask? First question, why did Hashem create us? Why did we need this? Give us Torah, you should do, you should not do. Who needs all this headache? Don't make me and leave me alone. You made me, now you're telling me what to do? Question number one, bothers everybody. Question number two, if you say that Hashem knows the future, as the Torah says, that means I don't have a free choice. Because Hashem already know my end. That means I couldn't do anything different. When I was born, He already knew my end. That means I live for nothing. Famous question, no? Everybody asks this. Third question, where was God in a holocaust? No? Well, how do you know that only Judaism is real? Okay, maybe it's real. Maybe Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, maybe they're all right. This is part two, part three, part four. The answer to those questions and many others. Oh, another famous question. Why righteous people suffer and wicked people celebrate? Where is the justice that Hashem spoke about in the Torah? And why some people are rich, some people are poor, some people are sick, some are not. Where is the justice? This is all questions about justice. Next question, how do we know we have Olam Abba? Maybe it's baloney, maybe then you die and you become sent and that's it. How do you know? Anybody came back from Olam Abba? So, I have news for you in case you had a doubt. I have the answers to all these questions in my website. You can see on the DVDs, my website is printed there. If you go in, most likely you don't want to go out. Baruch Hashem, we cover every subject in Judaism in this website. Everything. You cannot, I believe. Maybe you hold me wrong, but I believe that there's not one question that a Jew has in life that the answer is not in a website. There's 500 lectures there. And each lecture is between one to two. Some, are, some lectures are four hours. I had one lecture 10 hours straight in Brooklyn. From 8 in the morning, actually more, 11 and a half hours. From 8 in the evening to 7.30 in the morning straight. Why? Torah is very interesting. When you are presented to the people in a way that they understand, they can sit forever. People didn't go to work the next day. When I got out, it was sunrise in Brooklyn, on Ocean Parkway, if you know Brooklyn. Yeah, people didn't go to work. They had plans to go to work tomorrow, they stay all night. Why? When the soul of a Jew begins to enjoy, 
and he finally tastes the spiritual greatness of the Torah, anything else you give them is mud compared to it. It's like comparing mud, sand, to diamonds. All the rich people in the world connect them to a lie detector and ask them, are you happy in your life? You will find out that not even one of them is happy, and it's not an exaggeration. Yeah, maybe some of them have convenient life, they can get up whatever they want, they don't worry about the bills. Happy in their life, happy in their marriage, happy with their children, happy with what they do every day. No, they're empty. That's why they always change. They move, they buy this car, they change after two months. They try this, they try this watch, 15 watches here, 500 suits in the closet. Every day something new. Why? It's bored with his life. He doesn't find satisfaction. And that's why most people in the world are looking for spirituality everywhere they go. So the answers are all in the website. Let's answer quickly. I have whole long lectures about it. Where was God in the Holocaust? The Torah already spoke clearly about the Holocaust in details. In details and in codes inside the text. The Torah say that after Moshe Rabbeinu will die, the nation of Israel slowly, slowly would leave Hashem. They marry the Goim. They become like them, they change their names, their clothes, they'll become the Goim. And when it happens, they're going to say, where is God? Al asher yomru en elokim bekirbenu. Gematria, Germany. What was the answer of Hashem? Aster astir panay mehem. I'm going to close my eyes, my face like this, and I will not look at them and let the Goim destroy them. That's words in the Torah. If he didn't say it in the Torah, we have a valid question. Since the Torah said that it's going to happen, what, where is the question coming from? Because you never read the Torah. Now I have news for you. Inside, what I just told you inside the Torah, the word Holocaust in Hebrew, HaShoah, appears in equal mathematical skip of 50. Hey, 50 letters. Shin, 50 letters. Vav, 50 letters. Aleph, 50 letters. Hey. HaShoah, the Holocaust, in a chapter that speak about the Holocaust. Can it be coincidence? The answer, of course not. What's the reason for the Holocaust? Many reasons. What's one of the main reasons? Check the history of the European Jews. Almost 80% of the European Jews, almost 80% <coughs> through their yamaka, shaved their beers, started to dress like Goim, went to colleges in Germany, in Poland, went into business, started to open the stores on Shabbat, ate not kosher, changed their name to German names and Polish names, as you can see today, tradition, where the names come from. They left the Shabbat. And the wars, most of them started to marry Goyot. Hashem said, what do I need them for? That's it, they left me alone. Why did I put them here? To pass the test? There's no chance for them to pass the test. Why? The next generation are all going to grow up like Goim. Why do I need them to live here 70 years that they don't even know what the Torah is? His father was once religious. Now he's like a goy 20 years. He has children. He raised them in a church. Why do I need them here for? And that's what happened. Is it coincidence that the Torah didn't go to the Arab countries? Of course not. Why? Over there everyone was Shomer Shabbos. Check the history. Two... Middle Eastern countries didn't keep Shabbat so much. The Greeks, Greece, over there, 60,000 Jews died there. Tunisia, 60 to 80,000 Jews died there. Why? The Italian controlled it. They spoke Italy, French, whatever it was over there. They became modern. Oh, what do we need the Torah? Let's become like they're going. They got there. They wanted to go to Egypt. Hashem didn't let them. They wanted to go to Syria, they didn't go. They wanted to go to Eretz Israel, they didn't go. They made a covenant with the Arabs. It was ready to go. Hashem saved them. Why? When the, most of the Jews keep, Chaz Shalom, there's no Holocaust. Look at the situation today in America. When do you think the situation was war? Before the Holocaust started in Germany or today in America? Where it was worse? From what we see right now, you have in America six million Jews. The, the, 20 years ago, 51% of the American Jews married non-Jews. Now, I don't have to tell you what happened in the last 20 years. Now it became an epidemic. Almost no Americans marry Jews. They all meet in colleges, and they intermarry almost all of them. 
It's almost impossible for us to raise kids in this country unless if you're strictly religious. Why? You send them to public school, 99% they'll marry goyim. Every day I get three phone, 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 phone calls from people who beg. I do everything. Just speak to my son. Just convince them to leave the Goya. My, my, my question is, yeah, where did you send them? To public school? 16, 17 years they sit with Mr. Lee, with Mr. Williams, with, with Christine. Now you want me to, in hocus pocus, to fix the damage of 16 years? They grew up with them. They feel they're one of them. That's their culture. They grew up together. They ate together in the same dining room. Everything that Noah said to the Jews not to do, you make your children go do. And now you worry? You woke up a little bit too late. The religion is not hocus pocus. You cannot come to a guy and speak to him and give him two, three DVDs and tomorrow he become Rav Eliashiv. It doesn't work that way. Once in a while you get lucky. You have people with good neshama. You ignite a spark in the heart, oops, it's enough. But most people, they already, in their mind, already see the future with this Goya. Someone who marry Goya, his kids are not Jewish. Completely. And if she converted for him, it's a fake conversion. It's not for the truth. And all these Goyot that marry, I mean, convert for the Israelis that they meet in the clubs, who, who keeps mitzvot? None of them. They don't keep. So if she accepted conversion without becoming Shomer Shabbos and modesty and kosher food, who do you fool? Hashem didn't give her a Jewish neshama. She stays exactly the same Goya, and he lives in a lie. Oh, my children, they, you know, she, she converted. Most of them go to conservative or reform conversion. Maybe you go to the priest to convert them, it's better. People who put an X on the Torah, they are capable of making Goyim Jews? They themselves do not keep one law of the Torah. Imagine a judge, smoke drugs, killing people, rape women, and now he has to judge a rapist. What's the point of this trial? It says, any value? Someone who lights fire on Shabbat, what does the Torah say? Lo tevaru esh v'chol moshvotechem. So today, the people made an idea. Oh, you know, in the old days, it used to be very difficult. They have to take two rats, and it takes them 20 minutes to make fire, so it was a walk. Today, you press a button, you have light. Hashem doesn't care about this. Wrong. In the old days, nobody had electric. So how did they see what to do in a house? They had olive oil buckets with candles, and the whole house had candles. Somebody wanted fire on Shabbat, he didn't need to take the two stones and, sh and, and, and put them together. All he had to do is take a fire from here and move it to here, that's all. And this is not allowed on Shabbat, nothing to do with work. But ignorance makes people think the Shabbat was for then, for today it's different Shabbat. I have a whole lecture about Shabbat, two hours lecture. You watch it once in case... You are Michal and Shabbos, you never dare to do it again, promise you. Why? You see it from A to Z. It's a big loss. It's someone who invests a million dollars to make a penny. Is he smart? Someone who make him put a million dollars to, to make a penny on a stock. Is a smart person? Someone who is Michal and Shabbat, and believe me, forget about the punishments that the Torah is speaking about. Forget about hell. Forget about the part that he loses his share to Ulam Abba. Forget about billions of years that he will regret it. Forget about it. Let's say it doesn't exist for a minute. For this life, it's a big loss. All the cities in the world, they check the heart attack rates. Which city in the whole world has less heart attack than any other, any other city in the world? Thousands of cities. Which city has less heart attacks than any other city in the whole world. <coughs> Bnei Brak. 99.8% of the population are religious, Shomer Shabbos. Why? Why do you think a person is a machine? It's going to walk 31 days in a row? Of course his heart will collapse. <coughs> the Torah is, uh, Hashem knows, He created us, He knows what we need. A part of Shabbat is to rest, physical rest. Of course, Shabbat is much more than to sleep in a bed. If Hashem only wanted you to have a day or off, He would make it Tuesday, any day. You wouldn't have to be Dafka Shabbat. Hashem created the world in six days, and in a seven He rested. That's why the week all over the world are weeks, seven days, even though it's not a good calendar. It could have been that the month has 40 days, and every week is 10 days. It's equal. 
The year, 365 days and few hours. The month, 30 days, 31 days, 29 days. It's not so... It's not an even number. The week, four weeks and two days. It's not a good kind of math. No person would ever think about such a bad math. It shows you it's divine. Why the whole world have seven? Cycle of seven. Why? They have to go by us? They can make any calendar they want. Nobody in the world has a different calendar. You know what? Because from the first week, there were six days of creation and one day Shabbat. And then six days and Shabbat. And six days and Shabbat and all the people in the world saw how it is. And everybody learned. How does it work with the free choice? The Torah is full of warnings. If a person is a robot and he doesn't have a free choice, why Hashem gave him the Torah Bechlal? What's the point of wasting time gathering millions of Jews, speaking to them in front of everyone, to Moshe, and say, be careful, be careful, you should not do, be careful, what are you talking to me? I'm a robot. I don't have a free choice. You move me with your remote control. What are you telling me, be careful? I cannot do anything without your decision. Only a fool would think such a thing. Why Hashem wasted time to give us such a Torah? 304,805 letters. For what? What is all this show? What all these holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Judgment Day, Yom Kippur, Repentance Day, what's wrong? Anyway, some people claim you're a robot. Why would Hashem send Nevi'im, prophets, every few years, a new prophet come, be careful, everybody make shuvah. What are you talking about? I'm a robot. I cannot change. Whatever I just did, Hashem decided. The truth is, nobody believe it. It's a big scam of humanity. Do you think anybody believes that we don't have a free choice? If people think that we don't have a free choice, please explain me why we have jails and courts in every city in the world. Who are you fooling? You just said yesterday on television that you don't believe that we have a free choice. And you voting for this judge and for this dark judge and police, what's more? Everyone is a robot. You cannot judge a robot. If I move a robot with a remote control, go ten steps forward, make a right, make, go five steps, and he falls off the stairs, and he broke his hand, the robot. Robot, the machine. No hands. I pick it up. Fool! Why you broke your hand? Why are you not careful? Somebody who saw it will say, this guy is uh, crazy. He just moved the robot. The robot broke his arm. And he beats up the robot. Why? Why are you not careful? What do you mean? You are not careful. You moved him. What's the point? Why there is reward and punishment in a Torah in every chapter almost? If you are a robot. Who Hashem is fooling himself? The answer, of course, there's a free choice. And how does it work? I give you an example. You know the GPS? The machine, GPS. GPS, in my opinion, is the best example how the free choice works. If you have to go five miles from here to there, and you have to exit in between, and you enter the location, that's your destination. The GPS, it tells you, take the exit half a mile on the right. What happens if you miss the exit? What happened to the machine? Recalculate. Now from here, it's all changed the screen. If you take the exit, two more minutes, you reach your destination, you get your check, you go to the bank, you're a rich man. Since you missed the exit, you have to go now in this traffic on the other side, and now it's an extra hour, and you have to go in the street, and they close the road, and the police pull you over because you don't have a seatbelt, and yet, everything changed. That's exactly how life is. You become 20 years old, they're offering you a girl. Miriam and Rachel. You go on two dates, you're confused. Rachel is very beautiful. No irat shamayim. She's not tzadeket. Miriam, big tzadeket, not so pretty. That's the comparison. Most fools, what do they do? They go after the beauty. They don't care about tzadeket. They want to show off. I'm going to go to the wedding with her. I want to go to the wedding with her. What's gonna make their future much better? The righteous girl, not the pretty girl. Pretty girl will take him for vacations, shopping, jewelry, parties. And then in the end, if they stay religious, it's a miracle. That's usually what I see all the time. 
So most people will make the worst choice. Now let's describe two scenarios. And this is life every day. Every day we see this. The guy who chose the tzedeket, the guy who chose the not tzedeket, but the pretty one. The one who chose the pretty one, anyway, six months later, he's not impressed from her beauty. He got used to it. So now he has problems with her. She's annoying him. She's not a good cook. It's a problem. She wants money all the time. She drives him crazy. So he suffers from her. Irat Shamayim he doesn't have, she's not a good mother, she's not raising the children to Torah, she herself violates the rules of the Torah, she's not mothers, her wig is all the way to the floor, she goes against Hashem. If she's wearing a wig. If she's wearing a wig. If she's wearing a wig. So, she's destroying his future. Why? In the best scenario, his kid's gonna be baseball player. Tony, Vini, that's what's gonna be with them. What's gonna be with them? They're gonna know Torah. They're going to have Irat Shamayim. They're going to sit and, and write a book one day in their life. Nothing. One day they die like Goim. What made it? The bad choice. However, if we take this girl, not so pretty. But a lot of Irat Shamayim. She wants to talk about Torah all day. She cares about... Give, put her in a small apartment. No problem. It, it wasn't painted. It's not so nice. It's not clean. The floor is crooked. Who cares? We're here temporarily anyway. Before you, before you realize life is over. Chazal say, Ha'olam hazeh ke'eref ayin, a blink of the eye, and it's over. A blink of the eye, that's what life is all about. Before you realize it's over, you look back, what? 70 years? Take a person 75 years old a minute before he died. Tell him, write a conclusion of your life. Two pages maybe, if he's lucky. 70 years for two pages. Take a Chacham, tell Rav Eliashif, write conclusion of your life, 20,000 pages. Any Chacham. Why? He did something in his life, and he has nothing. What is he going to write? I went to the grocery five times a day. I watched NBA. I went on vacation. It's embarrassed to write it. One Rabbi went to a funeral. There was a eulogy. And he started to say, Moshe was a very handsome man in his eulogy. A sped. Hundreds of people, all the people from work, the family, they're all crying, the father, the mother. The rabbi comes, Moshe was a very pretty guy. Everybody open up their eyes like this. Pretty? What is he talking about this rabbi now? Moshe owned a baseball team in New York. It took him two years to convince them to sell. He owned five Mercedes. Two Rolls Royce, a special jet ski. He had a house in Florida. He had a house in New York. He used to go on a private jet. He was a great businessman. He, he always knew what's going to be in the business world. He was the best stock broker. He, he talks about this. And then the father comes, Rabbi, what is this? You crazy? You drank? What are you talking about? The rabbi said, yeah, two more minutes. He continued. He used to dye his hair. He used to go this, to went to the gym. He was a very strong guy. Everybody starts throwing things at the rabbi. Booz, get out of here. What is this? Busha. You're embarrassing the deceased person. It's bizayon amet. So the rabbi told them, okay, okay, I'm leaving. But before I leave, I just have one question to ask. Did I lie about one thing I said about him? Or it was all 100% true? Did he own a baseball team? Yes. Did he have a house in Florida? Yes. Did he have a house in New York? Yes. Did he die there? I didn't lie. Was a great businessman? Yes. Why all of you are embarrassed of what you are giving your life for? All your life you run after this nonsense? When I came in your debt to, to praise you for your nonsense? You want to die from the busha. Why? Because you know all your life is a lie. All your life is a lie. One rich guy he made a hundred million dollars in great business. Now he's sick. He's very sick. He has, the doctor gave him one last day to live. By tomorrow they said that's it. One Chinese doctor came out of the closet with a little medicine. With a small bottle like this. I say, hey Mr. Cohen, I have good news for you. Good news and bad news. Which one you want first? So I give start with the good news. He said, the good news is, I just made up this medicine, nobody in the world has it. 
If you take this medicine, you get up from the bed like brand new. But it's not kosher. How long? How good the story? It says, ah, it says like this. Wait a minute. It says like this. I don't know how long you're gonna live. One week. After all, he's 75. You know, every day it's a gift. Maybe a week, maybe a year. Nobody knows. I cannot promise. But I know from this specific disease, I kill you. Okay, that's the good news. Give it to me. So wait, now it's the bad news. The bad news is I checked your bank accounts and I saw that you have 90 and 100 million dollars. So here is the forms. Please sign here, sign here, sign here. 99 million dollars after you sign goes from your account to my account. But I'm very nice with you. I'm leaving you a million dollars. Well, what do you care? You're 75. How much money do you need? You have enough to live. What do you think? Mr. Cohen will do the deal or he will die? Die. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, here is Miami. In New York, <laughs> nobody <laughs> say die. <laughs> In New York, everybody agree. Of course, take the money, let me get out of here. Who wants to die? Did you ever saw a person? Did you ever see a person a minute before he died, how beg for his life? I once went to visit a big grave in, in a hospital that was dying from cancer. Every person who went to his room, he was begging him, give me a bracha. I asked him, why, why are you, every person who comes, this person, this guy, a young guy, 21 years old, give me a bracha. What is this? He said, you know, I don't know who these people are. Maybe one of them made a big mitzvah. Maybe his merit will save my life. Give me a bracha. Tzadik goes there, Rekash Baruch Kayem. My whole things will change around. Nothing to lose. So, he was very scared to die. Very scared to die. The Gemara said, Rabbi Yochanan, 120 years old, was crying in bed moments before he closed his eyes. His Talmidim, his students asked him, Rabbi, why are you so nervous? You are the biggest Tzadik in the world. What? Could it be better than you? He said, if I would go to a judge in court that you can bribe him and maybe you know him and send somebody, I would die out of fear. Now when I go in front of a real judge, that you cannot bribe him, you cannot do anything, he has to judge you fairly, I won't die out of fear. So the Talmudim saw that he's such a big chacham, such a big tzaddik. Rabbi, please give us the blessing before you leave us. The last blessing. What's the blessing he gave them? Believe it or not, hard to believe. But it's so genius. It said, I wish you would fear Hashem like you fear people on the street. That's the blessing he gave them. Why? Many years I thought, what the bracha is this? It's pusha. <laughs> you fear God like you fear from a person on the street? It's not such a... One time I drove to two o'clock at night on my way home. In New Jersey, Palisades Parkway, dark. You're alone on the highway. You're dying to get home. You're tired after a big lecture. People, you know. Another ten minutes, I'm home already. All of a sudden, we we lights, one, two, coming from all over, like they just caught the biggest murderer. For them, psh, a pleasure. Ke motse shalal rav. Registration, papers, your hands begin to shake, your heart. What happened? Only two hundred dollars. Not the end of the world, you know. Okay, you pay insurance another few hundred dollars here. Fine! Why are you so nervous? You can't find the paper, you forget. Where is it? I had it here, you check it here. You go, okay, after a minute, when the cop go, you see it was right in front of your eyes. It always happened. After the cop left, I was sitting for five minutes and thinking to myself, what a loser. Not once in my life I felt like this when I made a scene. Why I never felt like this when I spoke Lashon Hara, or when I, be, I did Chilul Shabbat? Never, never felt like this. <laughs> what did I just do? Never. $200. This was... This was the blessing that he gave them. If you fear Hashem like you're afraid the policeman, pshua, what a tzaddik you'll be. Of course. Why? <laughs> 100%. So the Jew will take the money. He will take the medicine and give out the money. Why? Nobody wants to die. And my question to you is, why you're willing to give 50 years of efforts. You killed yourself since you became 21. You work now until 70 years old, running around conventions, investments, courts, divorce, problems, fighting with your partners, with your competition, 
neglecting your kids, you forgot how your kids look from your greed, killing yourself for the money. Sometimes you had uh, weddings, family events, all kinds of things. Because of the business, you gave it all up. And now you're willing to give everything for one more day of life. Why? Because all your life is a lie. Waste of time. Why? If it was worth something, who would want to give 50 years to live another day? 50 years is nothing. He only did is make money. What did he achieve? Everybody asks why the righteous people suffer and the wicked people celebrate. Why? Mechalel Shabbat, $200,000 car. The rabbi comes to the shul with a bicycle. Where is the justice? No? Fair or no? The righteous tzaddik fixed shoes. The big rasha speaks on television. Millions of people clap for him. The biggest murderer, the biggest liar on television. Politicians, all these liars and crooks. Everything is shining. So where is the justice? The answer is Parashat Va'et Hanan, the last three sentences, the last three psukim. What does it say over there? Ani Elkana, I am a street god, Meshalem la Rasha el Panav la Avido. I'm paying the wicked people cash to their face to destroy them. Why he got Mercedes? Five times in his life he put fill in. I owe him. Take it. Why he got a big ten million dollar house? Two, tw twice in his life he kept Shabbat with his family, with his uncle somewhere. I owe him. Why did I give him a hundred million dollar success? Because he gets Dakar here and there to the yeshivot, to the poor people, to the sick people. I owe him. I am strict God and fair God. Even the biggest Rasha in the world, Hitler, if he made mitzvah, for this Hashem owe him. Hashem doesn't see that 99% of your, of your life is sins, 1% is mitzvot, so he said, you know what? Send him to hell, what do I care about him? He anyway did nothing. Only 1% good, no. You get for the good, but when? In a temporary life. 20, 30 years, it's over. Why? Because Hashem doesn't want this wicked person in Olam Abba. Where does it say it in the Torah? And we have to learn a big lesson from here. It says, Meshalem la rasha el panav la avido. What's the rest? Lo yeacher leshalem lo. I will not delay his reward. El panav ashalem lo la avido. What does Rashi say? Meshalem lo ba'olam hazeh kede la avido mechaya olam haba. Which means, Hashem says to you in the Torah, when you see all the wicked people, wicked means people who don't keep the laws of the Torah, even though they can be very nice people, but they go against Hashem. They share with the razor, they do all kinds of bad things, they eat not kosher, they don't keep Shabbat, whatever, many other things they do. It's called wicked, Rasha. Hashem paid them in this life to finish the cheshbon. I have nothing. He comes naked. I have nothing. But Hashem, I did this. I gave you a house for this. But I did this, I gave you a wife for this. But I did that, I gave you three children for that. But I did that, they made a party for you. Everything, Hashem goes on the cheshbon with him. Dim cheshbon. And he goes empty. Which means, what do we learn from this? If Hashem tells you the people I hate, I pay them right away. What does it mean? The people I love, I keep the reward for later. So what do you cry? Why do everybody cry? I don't have enough parnasa, Rabbi, give me bracha. Why? Keep it like this. The more you have here, the less you have there. What are you complaining? And here it's temporary, and over there it's eternity. Where does it say in the Torah that you have Olam Abba? Where? Clear, without a doubt. Where does it say in the Torah? That the reward of the tzaddikim, it's all afterlife. Parashat... It's appeared in two parashot. The last parasha we read, parashat Ekev. Few times it says that Hashem menaseh, ki menaseh Hashem etchem. Right? To see what? Lirot ayeshchem oavim et Hashem. I'm testing you to see if you love me. If you're grateful to me, or you chas v'shalom, I'm grateful. Then it says right after that, ki menaseh Hashem etchem lirot at yishmor mitzvotav im lo. If you're going to keep my mitzvot or not. What's the rest of the pasuk? Nobody knows, nobody reads. People are blind. And nine line, velo iru. Lehativcha 
באחריתך, to reward you in your end. clear in the Torah, why are you asking questions? read the Torah, you don't have questions. להטיבך, I'm gonna reward you in your end. why are you expecting it now? when you finish your test, you get your reward. where? if the body goes to the grave and there's no after life, Hashem is a liar, has to be shalom. Hashem lie, what is it, remember in Israeli Knesset? That Ramas everything before the election and the next day he doesn't remember your name bechlal? It doesn't go that way. HaKadosh Baruch Hu say, Ani El Kana, Stri God. Ani El HaEmet VeHaTzedek, Asher Lo Yisa Panim VeLo Yikach Shochad. I am the strict, faithful God that will never receive bribe and never turn the judgment from the truth. There's many psukim, many, many. Nobody reads. In this generation, people don't read. You may say, okay, no, the Chilonim don't read. The Mesortim don't read. But the Yeshiva Bachorim, they read. No, they don't read. They only learn Gemara all day. Some Musar they learn. Chumash, almost nobody knows. <coughs> Trust me when I tell you. Take people who learn Torah 10 years. Test them on a Chumash. I don't want to tell you their marks they're going to get. Chumash is already not high class today. Gemara, it's very hard. The brain, smoke comes out of your ear, everybody want to be in a top league. Yes, no problem. Learn Gemara 10 hours a day, very good. What about the basics? Navi. How many Jews in their life read Navi once in their life? Kings. 99% of the Jews in the world maybe know three or four kings. All the others, they don't even know who they are. You ask them, well, how many Navim the Jewish nation had? Maybe they know five. What about all the others? Well, this is the basics. Basics. If we don't know Aleph Bet, we're going to know about Olam Abba. It's in the Torah, clearly in the Torah. All these questions are not legitimate questions. They come from Burut, ignorance. And the last sentence that you remember, ignorance is the number one threat to the life of a person, even to the Goyim, not only to the Jews. Why? You buy a computer, you don't know how to work. You want to send a hundred emails today. If you didn't learn, so you type one email, you press send. You type it again, you press send. Type it again, you press send. Three days, you send a hundred emails. It happened to me. <laughs> one guy came in, what are you, crazy? What are you doing? Da, 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 da. Three hundred emails went out. How much I lost? Three days. A few hundred dollars. Time, my back hurts. I changed my whole plans. Why? Ignorance. I didn't learn one trick in a computer. And the last thing from here we should remember is this. One Jew, Nitzol Shoah, Holocaust survivor, he came to Cincinnati. Cincinnati, we have Rabbi Silver over there. Rabbi Silver was a big tzaddik. He passed away a few years ago. Rabbi Silver came to him and he said, I realize that you know how to pray and you take your yamaka off when you finish the davening, so that shows that you're not religious. But right now he saw that he speaks Yiddish. Now he knows Yiddish, for sure. What, what is he? He knows. He knows how to open the siddur. He knows everything. He asked him, what made you not religious? How did you leave Hashem like this? He told him, if you see what I saw, believe me, you wouldn't be religious. So what did you see? He said, I was in a camp. We were standing 17 hours in the sun like this, like crazy. If you move, they shoot you. Days, like this, months. If somebody got shot, you're not allowed to look. You look, they kill you also. This was my life. One time my friend tell me, hey, Fischl, it's five minutes before Shkia, sunset. I said, no, what, what do I care now, sunset? <laughs> Who cares about sunset after 17 hours? He said, we didn't put fill in today. This is how I was, you see? In the camp. Until... In the camp, we had one Jew that had one pair of tefillin. Nobody had tefillin. They took us without our stuff. He, was, he smuggled one pair of tefillin. But he didn't let you put the tefillin unless if you pay them something in return. Something in return. So he had to give him a cigarette, a slice of bread, a piece of potato. Something. <coughs> you don't have it? No tefillin. One time an old man was begging to put fill in, he doesn't have what to give. Everybody say, give him, let him put, let him put. No, if I let him, I would have to let you also for free. No money, no fill in. He said, when I saw that religion is business, I swore I'm done with that. I don't want anything to do with religion. That's it. 
רב סילבר טולדין, your foolish, your ear should listen to your foolish mouth. Hundreds of Jews, according to your story, gave their life not to miss Tfilin one time. Even though according to the Halakha, they didn't have to worry about it. It comes like they did. Anus, Anus Rachmana Patre, Patru. But they, get, they risk their life. If the Nazi would come and see them standing on the line to put Filin, he shoot all of them in a second. What's the question, Bechlal? But they're giving their life for it. You did not learn anything from them. One Rasha, Jew, you learn everything from him. What a liar you are. Why are you lying? You live in a lie. He started to cry. Ah, the man was crying like crazy. Forty years of frustration came out in a minute. You're right, Rabbi. I'm lying to myself. It's all an excuse. So it's not late for you. It's still alive. You breathe. You lost a lot, of course. What you lost, you lost. Et an What can we do? Not everything you can correct by making tshuva. You murder a person, you cannot bring him back. You brought a mamzer to the world, there's nothing you can do. You have to wait until one day he dies. That's not the best you can do. There's nothing else you can do. You brought a goy to the world, what are you going to do? Go kill him? Not allowed. Not everything tshuva can correct. You, if you made off, you're going to make tshuva, you cannot make tshuva. Made off cannot make tshuva. Why? He owes, I don't know, $65 billion to people. He's 70 years old. When is he going to make $65 billion to return all the money? Even if he stole $2 billion, where is he going to make it? If you die without returning all the money you stole, that's not tshuva. It's a partial tshuva. You corrected Shabbat. Kosher food, brachot, filin, yes. Stealing, you have to come back in Gilgul and pay everything back. How many Gilgulim is going to have to come to pay 65 billion? How many? If it's possible, Bechlan. Meuvat lo yuchal litkon. The guy started to cry and he made tshuva. Be'ezrat Hashem, we go to Rosh Hashanah. For us, it's not a picnic. Chilonim, they play Sheshbesh. What do they know about Rosh Hashanah? Ask them what do they live for, anyway they don't know. You expect them to know what to do on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Adin? But somebody who knows, in one generation ago, one, one, not two, not ten, they used to come in Israel 30, 40 years ago. Elul, half of the shul is fainting right away. Not exaggerating. Half of the people fall on the floor. Hey, Moshe, get up. What happened? Elul, Elul. One month of the judgment day. Imach Shimo Adolf Eichmann, one hour before they put him to hang him and burn his body, they asked him, what do you want? He was reading German newspaper, and he asked for a steak with a glass of wine. Like this. One hour, one hour, he's going to hang you. Rav Shach, Allah wa Shalom, Zecher Tzadik Livracha, Rav Shach said, in his drash, Einponovich, come see the difference between a Jew with a divine soul to a... A wild beast. An hour before they hang him, he wants steak with a glass of wine. You know? A Jew hears that he has a tribe one year from now. One year he cannot enjoy a meal. Lawyers, meetings, making, t finding alibi, witnesses, going to the rabbi ten times a day to cry, donations, try to make tshuva. What? Give me a glass of wine and a piece of steak. You understand what's the difference between Jew and a Goy? Not all Goyim. There's a lot of righteous Goyim, don't get me wrong. This is a monster. Zira Amalek. And we, Chas Shalom, sometimes like him. What do you want before you die? Some Jews also ask for stupid things. That you write my name on a hospital, that they remember I donate one's money. Honor. Kavod. That's what we are. We are sometimes like this. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to go. I have to go to my third lecture tonight. Thank you very much for this. And you know where to go? Okay, let's go. Thank you very much. We'll meet again, Bezrat Hashem. Thank you very much.